Hey, what's up everybody? My name is AJ Hall and today I'm going to show you how to mix a drum break from scratch using just raw drum break stems. All right, stay with me. Yeah. All right, y'all. So today we're going to be mixing a drum break from scratch. Many of you know me uh, from my left field drum break sound and uh, I'm very proud of my drum break sound. And I want to give you all a couple pointers as to how I'm thinking when I use uh, my different plugins and stuff when I'm mixing a drum break, right? Just how I think. And the beauty of today is I'm going to show you how to mix a drum break using all stock Logic plugins and all free plugins. So the stock Logic plugins, you can pretty much relate to any DAW if you really know your DAW system. And the free plugins, I'm going to provide a link to at the bottom of this video, all right? And real quick, I want to tell y'all, I'm having my drum break sample pack sale to celebrate one year of dropping drum break sample packs. So right now, until February 11th, all six of my drum break sample packs are all 10 bucks. So that's Left Field Drum Breaks Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, the bonus batch of 13 is a dollar, and the Splice Sessions kit is 10 bucks. That one has 43 drum breaks, a bunch of one shots, a couple of top loops, and a couple of melody loops. They're all 10 bucks. The link is at the bottom of this video, too. All right, let's do this. So I got Logic pulled up. This is the stems from one of the drum breaks that uh, I actually recorded a while back in my free batch um, that I sent to all my customers. So this is just raw mic stems there's no processing no nothing on these right it's just kick room mic bottom snare mic overhead the ribbon mic the crush mic which is like above the snare drum pointing directly at my knee the floor tom mic the hats and the snare top mic all right so this is completely raw let me just play you the break it's at 84 bpm and it's perfectly loopable All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is get that kick really, really hitting, right? The kick inside mic. Check it out. So the first thing we're going to do is just load up our stock compressor, right? I'm going to go back to the factory default. Uh, recall default. All right, cool. Stock compressor just on the kick. So with kick drums, for me, it's really just about threshold and ratio, right? The threshold is going to go around minus 35, minus 40, and the ratio is going to go up to about 3, yeah, 3.2 to 1. But let's take it. Check it out. Adjust the volume for how much compression we're getting with the makeup or the output gain. Make sure we're not peaking on any of these two meters. Alright, not bad. Next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we're not getting that air before the kick drum pedal hits. You notice the air, the whoop. We want to really isolate the kick signal. So what's really easy to do... Stock plugins in any DAW, you should have a good gate plugin, right? In Logic, I'm going to go to Dynamics, Noise Gate, right? Pull up my Noise Gate after the compressor, and it's really just going to go boom, 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 boom. I don't really want to hear a lot of the snare drum and a lot of the room around the mic, right? So check it out. It's doing a pretty good job, but we're going to, we're going to really dial it in. Now, now that it's completely isolated, we don't want just those kicks. We want it, everything around it to be ducked off a little bit. So we're going to take the reduction up to like minus 20 dB. So it's not going to completely take out the whole signal around those kick hits. It's just going to really duck it off, right? We're going to mess with the release on it a little bit because we want the whole kick drum note. The bow and not bop. Check it out. Nice. All right. Now, y'all are going to get to see one of my secret weapon plugins for my drum breaks, man. It's a free plugin at the bottom of this at the bottom of this video, man. 
It's called Thump by Metric Halo. All right. So I'm going to audio units, pull up my plugins, Metric Halo, MH Thump. I don't know if they list it as Thump or MH Thump, but it's Metric Halo Thump, right? Basically, what this plugin is, is a sine wave generator that you can attach to any signal. But you have to have it really, really properly gated if it's a mic signal, because otherwise it's going to attach sine wave generations to everything that that one mic hears. So you really got to gate your kick drum properly first to really get it done. All right, check it out. Just the stock setting is already hard. Check it out. That's off. That's off. Now I'm going to turn it on. Turn the wet and dry mix up to about 50%. It was all the way up before. All right, 50%. Ready? Metric Halo Thump on. 50%. All right, now what you're going to want to do, this is just a stock setting that it, that it comes up with every time. What, what you're going to want to do is turn off the second oscillator. We don't need it to be that complex, right? So the attack frequency is where the sine wave starts, and the sustain frequency down here is where the sine wave ends up. So you're really going to want the sustain frequency. You can get gangster with it. I really want that sustain frequency to be all the way down at 40 hertz. I don't know why it's coming up 40. 40. There we go. 40 hertz. Woo! Oh my goodness. All right. So I want to take that attack frequency up to get a little more punch out of it. 100 is not that punchy. Let's take it to eh, like 160, 170. Let's try 170 even. Let's try 170 even. All right. Now the other two knobs in this plugin that are really important is the envelope sustain and the pitch attack. The envelope sustain is going to give you more of that long 808 effect. Let me just demonstrate that. Bruh, this is a serious plugin and it's absolutely free, man. Metric Halo Thump, all right? So then what we're going to do is we're going to play with the pitch attack because that's essentially how long it takes the at how long it takes the attack frequency to reach down to the sustaining frequency so right now it's going real quick but we can make it go boom boom instead of boom right check it out So I already know, it sounds good right now with that 808 effect on it, I already know I don't want the envelope sustain up that much, that's kind of crazy. So we're going to take the envelope sustain down a little bit, check it out. Alright, so here's the break with our newly mixed kick drum. And if you want, you can take that metric halo thump into a bus and then really heavily gate that bus and then dial it in as needed. I don't like to get that fancy with it because my drum brakes are not fancy in the first place. It's just about sound and heart and what you're feeling, all right? Bruh, so we've already got the brakes sounding way better with just the compressor noise gate and the MH thump on the kick. Let me play you the whole brake without anything on the kick. Watch it with the plugins on. Serious. All right. So the next thing I really like to focus on is one of the overheads that I use. So I keep a ribbon mono overhead and I keep a regular mono overhead. Let's hear the ribbon by itself. So right now it's generating a good bit of the high mids and it has a way different tone than the regular overhead large diaphragm condenser. The regular overhead large diaphragm condenser is very honest and very high, a little bit high on the, on the high end. That's the regular overhead LDC. Check out the ribbon overhead. It's just, 
it's just way more of a vintage character. All right, let's let's mess with the ribbon overhead a little bit. Stock compressor, come on up. Here we go. So what I really want to do is I want to let I want to compress the hell out of this mic, but I want to let the kick drum speak out over the ribbon mic. So what I do with that, you go to your side chain, any stock compressor or waves compressor or any compressor should have a side chain input that's linked to the input tracks in your DAW, right? So you go to side chain, audio, kick. So I'm side chaining it to the kick. So whenever the kick barks through, the ribbon mic is now going to back off a little bit and I can control the, how much that happens with the parameters in here. Check it out. I'm going to leave the kick on. Let me just play it to you without the kick so you can hear how much is being ducked off. That's dope. The needle's moving a little, little bit too much and it's not coming back quick enough though. That's dope. So usually what I'm gonna do, just with these, just with these two mics, let's just play with it for a second. Alright, so obviously the ribbon mic is ducked down a little bit in volume. The kick is barking through heavy. So I'm just gonna take the fader up on the ribbon mic. Check it out. Next, what I'm gonna do, any good DAW should have some stock distortion plugins, right? I'm just gonna go to my overdrive plugin here in Logic. Once again, I use much more complex joints than this. I'm just showing y'all how to do it native in your DAW and with some free plugins, all right? That's already night and day with the overdrive. Woo! Woo! All right, so opening up the overdrive plugin, um, the tone is set at 980 hertz, so it's really not getting that much high end coming out of it. Let's take it all the way up, even though we're not going to hear 20,000 hertz that much. Even though we're not really going to hear it, it's just it's grabbing all of the high end on the overdrive from the ribbon mic. Here we go. Without the overdrive. It's already kind of nice, so I'm going to play with the drive. I'm going to take the drive up, and I'm going to have to compensate with the output as I do that. That's hard. All right, let's hear the whole drum break. We've only mixed two of the mics. It's already sounding kind of nice. All right, snare top is the next mic I like to mess with. Just the SM57 on top of the snare, people. It's not, it's not crazy. It's not complicated. All right, compressor. There it is. Stock Logic compressor on the snare mic. Here we go. Threshold and ratio are the most two most important. Just getting a little bit more of the attack out of it. Woo! All right. Take up a little bit of the highs on it with a stock EQ. Stock EQ. Take it up around. Let me see. I'm going to take it up around. Start a big curve at about 3,600 hertz. Make sure we're not get a little bit of a, get a little bit of that high pass going. 
duck it off at about 180. All right? 180,000. 18,000. Sorry. 180,000. That's already sounded pretty good because I'm going to do a couple of things to the master channel after all this. All right? So let's get to the hi-hats. Hi-hat mic is right here. I've already got it panned pretty hard left, as you see. So when I add my compression later, I already know there's going to be too much lows being echoed by everything. So I'm going to take all of the lows out of this hi-hat mic. Like, all of them. <laughs> that's, that's a little extreme. Hold on. There we go. All right. Next thing I'm going to do, back to our old trusty distortion, all right? Brought up my distortion. Bring the EQ tone all the way up to 20,000 hertz. Increase the drive and compensate by lowering the output. And as you do that, you're going to find that you need to send less highs into the overdrive. Because the more compression and overdrive saturation you add to audio sources, the more it's going to bring out all the frequencies. So you need to make sure you're ducking out the frequencies that you don't want. All right. So here's the whole break. Check out just channel EQ and overdrive on the hi-hats on and off. kind of stale without that overdrive and channel EQ. All right, it's dope so far. Now I want a little bit more snap out of the snare. So what I do is bring up the bottom snare mic. This is a mic that's on the actual wires of the snare drum on the bottom of the drum, all right? Check it out. So I'm gonna need to do the same thing duck out some of those lows because when I add my compression on the master channel it's gonna go, it's gonna go crazy with everything all frequencies it hears so you got to really duck out those lows even more on the bottom snare mic like a like a lot all right so next thing I'm gonna do go to my overdrive actually you know what let's get crazy with it I'm gonna go to my bit crusher any standard DAW should have a bit crusher. If not, there's loads of free bit crusher plugins. Check it out. Bit crusher. There's a preset in here that I like to use called 16 bit downshift. Luckily, I have a mix knob. Here's the bit crusher with the rolled off lows on the bottom snare mic. All right. We have now arrived at the no no point in audio world, right? Actually, my entire drum break process is a no-no in the audio world, which is why they're hitting so hard in the producer community right now, because I'm breaking the rules, damn it. All right, so there's a free plug-in by Baby Audio. Shout out to the good folks at Baby Audio. They are amazing cats, man. So Baby Audio has a free plug-in called Magic Switch, and it's actually one of the modules from their paid plug-in called Super VHS, which I do have. Super VHS is an amazing plug-in, they have the chorus module of that plugin for free. It's called Magic Switch, and it's amazing. Check it out. It's just a big 80s style chorus, all right? So I'm going to put the mix on, you know, 75%, whatever that is. <laughs> and I'm going to turn it on. Check it out. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got to set my stereo track. All right, now it's a stereo track. It's going to spread that chorus way, way out. All right, so here's the whole break with the bottom snare mic muted. Now here's the whole break with the bottom snare mic on with our channel EQ ducking off the lows, bit crusher on, and the magic switch chorus. Ready?
Gives it a little bit more snap on that bottom snare, all right? Next thing we're gonna do is get some of the regular overhead LDC. LDC is long diaphragm condenser. Large diaphragm condenser, sorry. All right, so that's a good, honest overhead depiction, right? Really all I want out of this is just to make it louder and to accentuate the highs a little bit more. So channel EQ, duck off some of the lows once again, but not that much. I'm gonna stop it at like 120 hertz. Give it a little bit more high accentuation. Duck off past like a, you know, 18K. All right, here we go. Add my stock compressor again. Bang, bang, bang. All right. Now I'm just gonna turn the channel up. All right, we'll see the drum break with the overhead mic muted. Now with the overhead on. Nice. So now we've pretty much got everything we need except for the crush mic. I'm not gonna do too much with the floor tom for this for today's exercise. Pretty much need the crush mic and the room mic. Again, the crush mic is sitting right above the kick drum, but pointing at my knee. So it's not above the middle of the kick drum. It's above the kick drum, but it's to the left of it, pointing right at my uh, right at my right knee. This mic is very very crucial to like a real gritty vintage uh, style drum break, all right? So I'm not gonna mix this isolated. I'm gonna add compression, a little bit of overdrive to it in real time while I'm hearing it with the rest of the break, all right? Here we go. You hear what happened when I added that overdrive to it? Oh my goodness. All right, another free plug-in time. So there's a company, let me make sure I don't mess up the name. There's a company called Audio Assault. They have a free transient designer called The Punch. And I love it, one, because it's free, two, because it's the simplest plug-in ever, right? You ready for the interface? That's it, folks, one knob. All right, check it out. This is on the crush mic. Transient designer on the crush mic. Let me give you the AB. 60% on the punch. I'll, I'll do it on and off. Woo! All right. Next thing we're going to do. Oh my goodness. All right, this is funky. So with the room mic, what I do, it's a, it's actually a mic that I keep right here on my desk. My kit is over there. Room mic is over here, all right? So what I do with the room mic is I actually use it to emulate the room, right? So I'm gonna accentuate that by just adding a reverb. Stock reverb on any any DAW. We can, we can, I can have a whole seminar about reverb plugins. But what you're gonna wanna do is go to your stock reverb. It's really about the EQ parameters within the reverb, right? So I'm gonna pull it up. Room mic isolated with a stock reverb on 100%. It's all right. 
But what I want to do, set that decay up, take the pre-delay way up. So what I want is essentially the room mic reverb to hit at a delay from when the actual drum break hits. So boom, right? Check it out. All right, so that pre-delay is way up at like 86 milliseconds. I'm gonna take it up to 100. Yeah, take it up to 100. Let me save while I'm at it. <laughs> so you're gonna go into over to your EQ parameters on any reverb. Any good reverb plugin should have EQ within it. If not, just put an EQ before your reverb plugin and do the exact same thing that I'm doing right now, all right? So you're gonna wanna duck off all the lows that you're sending into this reverb, like all of them. You don't want any of that, that kick drum to be echoing through. So what I'm really going for is for the snare drum to be the main thing that echoes. Right? That's what I want. It's not bad. It's not bad. I'm probably going to turn the actual, si actual signal down. My bad. I've been drinking coffee all day. It almost emulates kind of a clap sound, right? Let me play you the break without the room mic reverb on. All right, now let me play you with the room reverb on. All right, now that everything is properly balanced, I might take the kick drum up just a little bit more with the out gain on the MH Thump plugin. All right, might take it up a little bit more. We're pretty much at the space where we need to be to start messing with the master channel, all right? The master channel is really where the secrets lie because it's all about balancing, getting everything knocking like you need it to, and then the vintage color and just whole vibe of the drum break comes on the master channel, all right? It's not bad. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is bring up what I consider to be probably one of the greatest um, hidden plugins in any DAW ever. So for those of you out there who are looking for like the tape sound um, and you think you gotta buy either a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine or tape plugins, you don't have to do either of those things because almost every DAW comes with a tape delay plugin, right? It's a delay that's meant to emulate signal being sent through a tape machine coming back out at a certain latency, right? So if you have one of those plugins, you have a tape saturation plugin. I'm going to show you how, all right? I already pulled it up, so let me, let me do no plugin. All right, fresh start. You go to delay, pull up any tape delay plugin, right? This is the stock Logic tape delay plugin. What I'm going to do, turn off the tempo sync. The delay time is going to go all the way down to 0, 0.0 milliseconds. So that's as close to the real-time drum break coming out of it as possible, right? Take the dry signal all the way down, the signal that you're feeding into it. You're not going to hear any of the signal you're feeding into it. Turn the wet all the way up. You're going to hear all the signal that's coming out of it, none of the signal that's going into it, right? So check this out. Now with those settings, I'm going to turn it off. I'll play you the whole drum break, and then I'll turn it on. Peep it. All right, now check it out. Tape delay on. All right, so it's obviously a world of difference, right? So now we're going to play with the clip threshold. This is basically how much signal you can send the tape delay before it starts distorting, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with the clip threshold, and I'm going to turn it down. So that means it's going to take very little signal to make it start distorting. Here we go. Now what you might have to do in this process, if you did end up putting that MH thump on your kick, you might have to play with it a little bit because tape emulation and frankly my my reel-to-reel -reel tape machine, they get a little finicky with low end. So so like 
Back in the days, 40 hertz in a recording was not a thing. Big 808 drum sounds was not a thing. So a lot of <laughs> vintage tape and a lot of uh, like raggedy reel-to-reel -reel tape machines, they're not really meant to handle like 808 sounds. So you might have to dial back some of the MH thumps. Let me do that right now. All right, the next thing you can do in your tape delay plugin, your tape delay plugin, you can play with the high cut and low cut. It's really the EQ that's coming out, right? So I'm gonna duck off a whole bunch of the highs. I'm gonna leave it at like 84, 8400 hertz. Maybe I'll take it down even a little bit more. Let's, let's explore it a little bit. Mind you, we just came from a completely raw mic sound into something that sounded like a real old school style drum break, all right? So the last thing I'm gonna show y'all is my favorite, maybe my favorite plugin of all time, so far, thus far. Uh, the Bedroom Producers Plug, <laughs> Bedroom Producers Blog Dirty Filter plugin. It's absolutely free and it's at the link at the bottom of this video. That's three free plugins that I'm telling y'all about, even though my drum break mixing process is a whole lot of other stuff that I'm not really ready to show y'all yet. <laughs> so the Bedroom Producers Blog Dirty Filter. Go into my audio units, Bedroom Producers Blog Dirty Filter Stereo. This plugin is so serious. Now it's gonna come up with a, a couple of weird parameters. What I like to do is take the drive all the way down and the mix at about 80%, okay? So this is basically a low pass and a high pass filter with a mix knob, slope, and a volume out knob with an overdrive that applies to these two filters, all right? Check it out. This is where the magic happens. What I want to do is duck off some of the highs with this low-pass filter. And I'm going to do this in real time. I'm just showing you the knob. All right? I'm going to, and I'm going to play with this drive knob. You don't need a whole lot. So this is where the magic happens. Check it out. Now you can alter that to your... To your uh, you can alter that with your mix knob, right? If you don't want too much of it, you want it to be parallel, you can go 50-50, Woo! Bruh, yeah, we there, we there. So obviously my, my drum breaks that I have in my sample packs and that I do in custom break packs, they're a lot more advanced than this. There's a lot more side chaining. It's going through the reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. Fam, if you saw my master chain plug-in, you would vomit. There's so much on my master chain, it's not even funny. But that's the way I hear it, therefore it is the way I wish it to sound. So I say all that to say this. Um, you can get your drum brakes sounding pretty damn good with some real character, not using very expensive mics, not using any expensive plugins at all, not using really any preamps, none of that. All you need is the raw signals, and maybe in the next video I might even show you how to, how to mix a drum break with just the two track of all the mics, alright? So, this has been uh, a snippet of Behind the Breaks. Let's go. Alright, so before I forget, all of my drum break sample packs are on sale um, until February 11th. They're all 10 bucks a piece. So there's 50 drum breaks in each one of those. The splice pack has 43 drum breaks and a big batch of one shots. The bonus batch of 13 breaks is a dollar, and there's also five free drum breaks on my website using that Bedroom Producers blog Dirty Filter plugin. So if you like this video, hit the subscribe, share, and like buttons, and uh, let's get it in, man. Left field drum breaks. We are out here. Peace.